the CRM 100 made by International Medcom. This Geiger counter is actually very similar to its brother, the Rattalert 100 and the Rattalert 150. It features a small Geiger Mueller tube housed inside, you can see the hole right here, that is approximately the same size as a AA battery. The tube used is called a thin window tube. The reason is because the, there's a small mica shielded window in the front which allows alpha particles to enter the tube. Also very weak x-rays can enter the tube through this exact hole. It's very delicate and so it has a metal mesh over the top. The CRM100 is a fully functional yet small and inexpensive Geiger counter. It's made of plastic and it's reasonably impact resistant. This particular unit has been dropped several times before and it continues to function. The cost of this unit varies per the manufacturer but I have seen it as little as $300 and as much as $400. The CRM100 features several different modes and a, a, a very easy to read LCD screen at the top. There are buttons, switches, input ports. Let me explain what each of these does. There is an on and off button, three positioned. Off is the bottom position, the unit is off. On position, the unit is on, but it is no longer producing any sound. Audio, the top position is the same as on, except that there is an audio sound, a tick sound, a clicking sound from a little uh, buzzer which is inside of this hole right here, will indicate an ionization event. That is when something radioactive passes through the actual tube and triggers a response. The change in the, res in the numbers will be up here as a result of that response. Above, you have a second three position selector switch, which has three possible modes in two different configurations. The bottom mode is the timer mode. When the timer mode is engaged, you can use these buttons plus and minus and set to change the amount of time in hours all the way up to 40 hours. And once you get down to two hours, you can do it in increments of 10 minutes all the way down to when you get to 10 minutes and you can do it in increments of one minute. When you've selected the amount of time, in this case two minutes, you press the set button to start accumulating a count. This is a count of every single ionization event detected in that period of time. This is useful for establishing a background reading. Switching out of this mode disables the timer. As you can see, if we go back, it's ready to start again. Currently, this unit is set in SI units, Le Système International. Currently, we are seeing counts per second, in which case there isn't anything radio enough, radioactive enough to, to actually create that. And let's use a CZ-137 check source. With the CZ-137 check source, if we give it a few seconds, it will actually give us a running total, and you can see that it actually does show but of course you need to have a radioactive emitter strong enough to actually trigger counts per second readings. Additionally, there are microsieverts per hour. We can switch to microsieverts per hour. In the microsieverts per hour mode, we, what we are actually seeing is this unit's attempt to tell us how many microsieverts of radiation it is being exposed to using a reference of cesium-137 but gamma energy only. If this cesium-137 sample had its beta radiation shielded, this should be plus or minus 10% accurate adding to it the inaccuracy of this source, which is 95% accurate, 
then you're plus or minus 15%. change these settings to the standard American units, milliroentgens per hour, and counts per minute, shut the unit off. While pressing the plus key, bring the unit back on again. Let go of the plus key when you see the menu button. There is a fully functional menu these plus or minus arrows allow you to move through with various settings and this wraps right around again. The, the setting that most people use is setting 2 which allows you to change the units. Press the set key to engage this. And now you see counts per second, microsieverts per hour. You can switch between them with the plus and minus. Once you decide which one you want, press the center set key and hold it for a few seconds and then let it go. And it will restart. Additionally, if you press it quickly, you would have to shut off the unit and restart the unit to see. It takes a few seconds, or in this case an actual ionization event, for the unit to actually detect anything and report to you what it has found. Oops, let's cut the sound on. And now you see we're reading in milliroentgens per hour or in counts per minute. The side of the unit has an audio an audio output which allows you either to connect to a computer for data logging or just put a pair of headphones on if you want to wander around and checking your backyard to see if you can find radiation on the ground. And of course it has a calibration port for an electronic uh, calibrator if you just randomly happen to own one of those. Ludlum Instruments actually sells a really nice unit for, for doing this. The unit is capable of detecting alpha beta, gamma, and x-rays through the thin window. Its sensitivity is rated as 1,000 counts per minute per milliroentgen per hour. And of course that is a calibrated sensitivity. It has no alert feature whatsoever. This is how it differs from the Rattler 100 which actually has a adjustable alert feature. Its ranges that it can read are 0 or 0 0.001 to 110 milliroentgens per hour, 0 to 350,000 counts per minute, 0 to 3,500 counts per second, or 0 0.01 to 1,100 microsieverts per hour. It's claimed to have a battery life of 625 hours in a one milliroentgen field. I find that this unit typically gives me a four to five month running time at background. My background, by the way, being about 13, 14 counts per minute. Overall, I do not find this unit to be terribly sensitive. It's not a bad unit, keep in mind, but as you see, I have several radiation sources here from a uh, radium compass, strontium-90, uh, one microcarrier of cesium-137, and a tenth of a microcarrier of cesium-137, polonium-210, which I don't expect to detect unless I get right onto it, and some uranium, and as you can see, it's not detecting it at all. If I get close enough, it does. <clears throat> now, let us see the detection for each of these. Natural uranium. And as you can see, we get about 470, 480 counts per minute. And now for polonium 210. Oops, drop my polonium 210. Getting about 867 counts per minute off of this originally 3700 Becquerel Plenium 210 source, but now 
the actual how the actual activity is much lower, perhaps 30 to 40 percent of what it originally was. Now this is one microcurie of cesium-137. <clears throat> Let's pull it out. I keep it in a bottle cap. I find that bottle caps allow me to more easily hold this without it falling over or getting screwy. And as you can see, this is much more easy for the unit to detect. gets to exactly where it's going to be, around 13, maybe as much as 14,000 counts per minute. If I flip this upside down, the plastic blocks a lot of the betas. So we can switch to this energy unit, millinekens per hour, and know that we're probably getting a real reading. Because, of course, this unit actually is calibrated for cesium-137. Next up, strontium-90. It should be noted that this unit has anti-jamming built into it, and if it is exposed to an incredibly powerful radioactive source, even several, several dozen if not hundred times greater than what it can possibly show you, it will hold full scale but not drop to zero as some old units used to. And now finally, can it detect family heirlooms that are radioactive? The answer is not very well, but yes it can. The Geiger tube is an LND 712. 